Oh, look at this thing. She's seen some days. That's a lie. It's, it's all like eight and a half minutes, maybe. Just didn't make the cut. Just didn't make the cut. So let's see what we're working with today. That's a big slab of Alumalite. If I wasn't broke, I would afford a carbon fiber one, but I can't. So we got 10 mil thick Alumalite. And we got some one inch by one inch square aluminum tubing that will help with some stiffness. And what do we got down here? Oh yeah, all right, I got, let's put these on the table. See if we can focus, focus. So um, we got these threaded uh, clevis mounts. Um, these are M8s and what we're going to do we are gonna use actual just threaded rod and then we're gonna double nut the ends and she is not gonna go anywhere. There's no way this rod is gonna pull out, do anything stupid and then it will have four of these and we're gonna make four drop down hard mounts as well. So if we see what we're looking at, So, you can see, oh, might even just be able to zoom in. Down there at the bottom, boop, hard mount, it's aluminum. It is welded back behind. right to the box section. So there's no way that's going anywhere. We are going to use, whoa, sorry guys, just on the floor now. I own a lift, I should probably use the lift. God, what am I doing with my life? All right, back to your regular scheduled program. Hard mount in there, that's welded right to the box section. We're gonna be using this clevis mount on the bottom there. I think these two are gonna go diagonal and outboard in front of the oil cooler. Um, like I said in the other video, I'm not a huge fan of putting them through the bumper to stick way out. Obviously, you do that for a reason because it works the best. Um, I'm just trying to get away with a more sleek look, but I think I'm gonna have to just send those two out. And then I'm going to run a bolt through here with a one on the bottom, and these will come straight down, and then we'll use the aluminum to go across the front of the intercooler. That way, uh, basically, we'll tie both of those in hard mounted, create a nice rectangle, and then we'll have two going out to grab the front, and then we'll have the two hard mounts behind the oil coolers. And then before, we also had two um, up off this coming behind. So we might keep those as well. Um, just really trying to throw the kitchen sink at it here. So yeah, let's uh, start making a template, I guess. Done. Now you have a bumper on. So what I'm gonna do is, if you can still see me, is since this is already cut in a square rectangle, I know my shapes. Um, I'm gonna get this 90 degree edge 
just as far on the outboard, I might as well use the cuts that it came with to just help me instead of, I'm not gonna cut off four inches just on one side for no reason. So, get this snapped in place. Good to go. Um, grid life for me is five inches. We are going to take a tape measure and a Sharpie and kind of draw out our five inch circle around the bumper and that gives me the maximum that we could possibly work with. So I set the camera on the tool bench, which is now where my Sharpie is, so cut. All right, so I got my trusty Sharpie and tape measure. Uh, I'm gonna set my outside boundary on both sides. So this side is already this flat edge. Um, I'm gonna do three inches past the bumper. I am doing this because I have uh, wing end plates that I want to mount on the side. So I want them to be able to mount and that will help with um, air, vort air vortices to like clean up the tire wake. Um, so I need to be able to mount those on the sides. So I'm going to leave myself three inches. So since we're going to be using this anyway, this is my straight edge for the deck. So, I'm going to mark my three inches, I'm going to drop the cap. If you look, right, we just jam this thing against the tire. That's really great, helps me level the car side to side. Um, but obviously as the tire moves up and down, um, and as you turn, the tire gets, you know, more forward and more rearward. I guess, I'm trying to think of a good way to describe it. Um, can't really set you down. But yeah, so obviously when you turn in, and your tire has a motion to it. So when that motion, it's going to, with caster, poke out more and less, depending on whether you're turning right or left. So we want to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is I have a cutout in my bumper for oil cooler ducts. Um, I am going to, if you had a normal bumper, you would just maybe at the back of your bumper, line up the back of the Illumilite with that. So I'm going to guesstimate, just measure off the tire and see how far out I want it. And then what that will do is since it's going to move this whole thing out, then we can draw the arc or the shape we want across the Illumilite. To help Basically what I just do is just measure out five inches. I'm gonna hold this here and just work this end on the bumper all the way around. I'm gonna make some normal marks before just to, I don't know. This is like coloring between the lines. Like if you stare at the line long enough, you just miss it somehow. I don't know. But these kind of just set eye reference markers so I'm not just staring right at the bottom and then just, you know, miss or if I bump out or something, like, I'm gonna just go over all these anyway, so. So after you're done tracing, you're gonna have something that looks like this, which is just the generic profile that you want your splitter to be. If you want sharp edges, draw sharp edges. If you want round, make it round. So now that we have this done, we get to cut. So let's grab the jigsaw and get to work.
this is the shape that I was going for. So um, now we mount it. This is usually the more, more difficult part for people at home um, just because of limited on mounting points or you know if you're doing adjustable rods you gotta thread both ends in pro awesome rods you gotta have the hard mounts so there's a bunch of different ways to do it you can do drop downs no drop downs all rods I wouldn't recommend doing all rods but you can all right so after a dead battery this is what I'm gonna be doing Ooh, too much all right so I'm gonna have one of these rods it's gonna go through the bumper it is what it is nothing I can change um, then I have this beefy rod going down to a square tube going across so that will help with side-to-side -side stiffness and then in the back I have those drop downs and then I just welded um, some pipe over a, a flat piece of bar stock that's then bolted to the splitter so that way I can just pull that bolt out through the center and then the whole back will drop down. That will help keep it like a fixed position because the rods are all, you know, these have play um, a little bit and like they, they can move. So, I mean, you don't want to have that free motion in your splitter or it's just going to chatter and destroy itself. So definitely want at least two fixed mounting points at the back is definitely the best. That might be a lie. Realistically, I probably should have done back and coming down here for solid mounts. And I think I thought about doing that and I forget why I changed. You know when sometimes you have a good idea and then you just get going and you forget it? That might be one of these times. But either way, let's uh, put this on the ground and stand on it. Make sure it can support me. flex but like I mean it's 200 pounds on the leading edge so obviously the downforce is distributed sucking the whole thing down so this is a uh, I hope to some extent the vehicle oh yeah support so now I'll have these ones because obviously outside here is flexing a little bit more. So. But the front seems rigid, so it should be sweet. So let's get it back up in the air and do the last two. All right, so these are just the splitter rods I had from last time. So it's kind of just a rough location. I think I'm going to add some new ones maybe and just go a little bit longer. Try to get out more, just as much as possible. But like I said, I'm not a crazy fan of doing it this way, but sometimes this is just what you got to do to make it sweet. And like it's not crazy crazy. Just some little guys. Maybe I'll get the ends black or something just to kind of keep it stealth. But yeah, that's how you make a splitter, guys. Pretty easy. I'll probably get Mike out here and we can both try to stand on it. And yeah, DIY splitter is Alumilite. Just makes it super easy. Just cut to shape, a few mounts, and then you're done. All right guys, I've been slacking, but here is the final splitter. I've been doing some daily driving in the car, which is pretty crazy. It's been a while since I was able to do that, but yeah, the splitter is looking good. I have some end plates that I was waiting for to finish this video, but 
it's like a three day print and I had some issues last night and so I just had to restart it and I was like, well, I gotta get this video out anyway. So that's what she looks like. I still think it's got a pretty sleek look even though I had to go the splitter rods out, but they're hard mounted and she is in it to win it now. Um, yeah, I guess the last edition is this little plastic lip. They make a carbon fiber one, but race car life, it's gonna get broken. And honestly, it was 180 bucks on eBay. I had one before, lasted a good amount of time, so I figured I would go with it again, but uh, be hanging off the very edge. It's kind of hard with the plastic to actually stand on it, but if it can support me at the very edge, you know it's good, so. All right guys, thanks for tuning into the video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys made your splitters out of. You know, I know there's ABS, Alumalite, plywood, carbon, you know, there's a bunch of options, so. Let me know what you guys are into making yours out of, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.